Greetings everyone, MacRover180 here. I wanted to bring to you uh, TuneIn Radio 2.0 and showcase the minor, well not minor, the major differences between the previous versions. So let's get started. So one of the major differences uh, would have to be the icon, I mean not major, just a slight color difference. So I have my old G1 here and I haven't updated uh, tune in radio yet on this device um, but as you can see here it's the icon is has gone from blue to white not a huge difference sorry might be a little bright there but I tried working with the brightness um, so as you um, go into the app you'll notice the interface is different it now has a tabbed interface which gives you immediate access to presets and browsing so this is how it looks now where the you just go to my presets here and then you have your presets listed as normal then browse that brings that other menu previously and you'll see in just a second it was all together so let me launch this here Hopefully it will load. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's just great. Right. As we wait for this to load, error occurred. As we wait for this to load, um, one of the major differences is, and you notice this when it's a radio station that usually um, has a schedule of some sort, like, I'll show you what I mean, let me just uh, go to, like, for example, okay, Radio Scotland, BBC Radio Scotland, as it's playing, hang on, let it load here, Is buffering. So you notice this track bar here that tells you, or the seek bar rather, that tells you, hang on, let me focus in better, that tells you how much time remains in the programming. Now, if you go to like a regular station, let's say. Uh, audio book radio. Just opening. Okay. And it might be a little too bright. Right, the seek bar is in here. So I notice it's it, the seek bar usually shows up. Um, with uh, radio stations that usually have like um, like scheduled programming so like you'll notice um, that you'll have a schedule showing up or something to that effect ah okay so if we go back here are the main differences I see the my presets and everything else is just one list here versus the interface here, if you notice the difference. Also, you see the shadowing effect as you scroll up, like right around here. Just nice little differences. Also, um, let's say if you're in my music or my presets and you wanted to search for a radio station, let's say, oh, that's right, I wanted to look for a radio station. You can't do it. You would. You can't do it from this view. You would obviously have to go back. Versus, as you can see, if I'm in my presets, or let's do something else. If I'm in my location, you know, and I want to look, but I decide to search for a station instead, I can because now there's a universal action bar with quick access to search so I can search wherever I am 
within the uh, you know within the menus. I don't have to keep pressing back each time, which is great, I think. Um, uh, version 2.0 still doesn't have uh, the ability to move the application to the SD card, so if you were hoping for that, it's not here yet, um, or I shouldn't say yet because I don't know if it's planned at all, but for anyone who's, who's kind of um, hoarding space or is very careful with space, even if I even if as I've gone from the G1 to the my touch 4G I'm still careful with space just because of the habits I've, I've gained from not having any space whatsoever on the G1 so um, so I understand like uh, space is valuable especially with the Android system uh, platform I should say or operating system rather so yeah that was a quick overview of the changes. Mm, let's see. Uh, oh, you can long tap to remove uh, a preset or to play. So before you're just stuck with your presets, like let's say there's a station that isn't playing anymore. Let me see if I can find one on my list here quickly. Here. This one, like I can now, well, hang on. Okay, you're supposed to be able to long tap and remove, a, yeah, see, now you can um, press and hold to remove a preset, but I guess you can't do it if it um, no longer streams, which is slightly disappointing. So you still have to go to the website to remove a dead stream, like a completely dead stream. But you, if it's still playing and you want to remove it, you can either you can either choose to play or you can delete it. Um, right. So that's it for me for now. Um, if you'd like any other application reviews or overviews or just minor changes to the update let me know take care